Hey beloved, my name is Krista Pettiford. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to share a message on the power of godly meditation. And I'm going to give you three tips for meditating on God's word. I like to do videos on things that I've been studying out for myself. And lately, the Lord has been taking me back to meditating on his word because I was asking God, I'm praying in one specific place. You know, we never arrive. We're always growing in grace and in the things of God and in our spiritual disciplines and working out our salvation with fear and trembling. And I have been focusing on one thing and the power of my words and really harnessing that which I speak and using my words to speak kind and and to speak faith-filled words and not worry or anything like that. So this brought me to meditation. And as I was watching videos on the meditate, meditating on the word of God, I watched some really good videos on that word, on, on godly meditation and how to meditate on the word of God. And we always want to refresh ourselves because we don't know everything. And so what I learned as I was relearning and hearing things from other people's points of view is the thing that stuck out to me is Joshua 1.8, and that's what I want to share with you and where I want to start this video. Joshua 1.8 says, this book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. And that verse really stuck out to me, not just for the word meditate, but for the words and the, the sentences that come before and after it. It says, you shall meditate on the word day and night for then that you may observe to do all of the word that is written therein for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success and so observe to do all that is written in there so we if, if we the only way to we are meditating on the word so that we can be doers of the word the only way that we can do the word is to get it down into us and then our way we will make our way prosperous when we are doers of the word. So let's go back forward. If you want to have success in the things of God, in, in uh, the Christian life, then you need to be a doer of the word. James says, be a doer of the word and not a hearer only deceiving yourself. Let's read that in James chapter one, verses 22 through 25. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. Remember, we heard to observe, to do all that is written therein. For he observes himself, he goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he is. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his doing. And so what does that tell us? That it goes back again to having good success. There's a blessing when we do the word, but the only way to do the word and the power of godly meditation is that it says back here in Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth. Now that could sound weird. It means that you shall not stop speaking of it. You shall not let it stop coming out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night to observe it, to do according to all that is written therein so that you can make your way prosperous. So you have to meditate on it that you may observe it. So how do you observe it or do it or not become just a hearer of the word, looking at it and forgetting what you saw? You meditate on it day and night. And this word meditate means to murmur in pleasure or anger, to ponder, to imagine, to speak, to study, to utter, to talk, to mutter, and to think upon. So we can meditate on things, whether they're good or evil. 
whether they make us angry or they make us happy and give us pleasure. We meditate on things that we give our attention to. Um, another definition includes chewing on the word like a cow chews on grass, holding it in his mouth, chewing it on, chewing and chewing and chewing and pondering it with his taste buds, <laughs> so to speak. You know, when you ponder something, you're thinking on it, you're thinking it through, you're thinking it through, you're thinking of it from different angles. And so that is kind of, you're chewing it over. And so that is another definition of to meditate on something. And Proverbs 4.20 says, my son, give attention or observe my word. Incline your ears to my sayings. So God is saying that even though we can meditate on several different things, he wants us to give attention to his word. He wants us to meditate on his word, incline our ear to his word. So again, the power of godly meditation is that you cannot succeed in the things of God without doing the work, but you can succeed when you meditate on the word. The word then gives you the power to be more than a hearer, to be a doer of the word of God so that then you can make your way prosperous and then you can have good success. And so what I see looking at James and Joshua is that in the Old and New Testament, it was understood that people need to meditate on the word of God. And if they don't, they deceive themselves into thinking that hearing is going to get them there and that hearing and, and hearing it and maybe hearing a message and all of that is going to get them what they need. But they're two different things. And so I want to share my story and why this is important to me. As I said at the beginning. I was asking the Lord, what am I doing wrong? I need to really govern um, my words in this season in a more focused way. And he brought me to, you're going to have to meditate on certain scriptures he had already given me that I had been confessing in my quiet time during my devotional, but it had got to the point where it was just a box that I was checking. And he reminded me that I have to go back and really meditate on on the word of God in order to get it into my heart because then that's when it changes my nature. It, sometimes our first nature is to respond the way we would normally respond in a situation or a, a old situation, a situation that triggers us or a new situation that maybe brings fear or something to us, um, anxiety or something to us. But when we meditate on the word, it changes us and give, changes our response once the word gets down into us. The in, incorruptible word of God that is able to save our souls. And so I was really asking the Lord. And so during that time, I, I, I went back and I began, as I said, to study this. And so this is where the Lord brought me to. And so I want to give you, I've shared the power of godly meditation, that when we meditate on God's word, we become more than, ob we become more than observers that go away and forget, but we actually become doers of the word because it gets down in us as we chew on it, as we meditate on it and all of that, it gets into us and then it begins to govern our lives and our actions and our words. But I want to give you three simple tips. There's a lot of videos out about how to meditate and the difference between godly meditation and um and new age meditation and all of that. But I'm just going to give you some tips, some quick tips on how to, to meditate on it that you can put implement right away. Number one, find a scripture in the area of your need or the thing that you want to meditate on. Uh, find a verse and a version that you like. So read a couple of different versions and verses. You can go to Bible, the Bible app. You version where I have my three um, plan reading plans. You can go there and you can read about the different verses. And when you find a version and a verse that really speaks to you, that you can remember that clicks for you, then you want to take that scripture. And then number two, you want to break it down into different 
into dissected, so to speak, and what what is God saying to me? Like I just did with Joshua, what are the key words in this verse? What is God speaking to me? How do I implement it into my life and begin to think through what the application is to you and what God wants to say to you and how it can govern you? And then number three, calm your mind. Take time each day or maybe a couple of times a day, even when you're driving and you would be meditating on the day. As we said, you can meditate on anything, meditating on work, what's going to happen and all of that. Instead of that, take that time back. Instead of meditating on your worries, your fears, what you have to do for the day, take some of that time back. Calm your mind. Get undistracted and get into your quiet place with God. I call it your inner sanctuary. You can do it in your devotional time, but you can also do it when you're going out about your day. If you're able to reclaim that time and realize what you're doing, um, that you're spending other, where you're spending your time on that you could take back. And then you can take that time and chew on the word, chew on that verse. So you want to memorize the words so that you can Pull it, pull it into your heart and your soul and your mind. Keep it before you in your mind's eye any time of day. But you want to do more than memorize it so that you're just uttering it out and not really getting it into your spirit when you're speaking it. There's something about the power of belief. When you really believe what you're saying and you really take an emotional charge and that word affects you, whether it's evil or good, what we believe, what we put our emotions and our soul into and not just kind of spew off, those words really have more power because they're coming from a deeper place. So you want to get into that place and you want to speak it over yourself Focus on it, its meaning, its application to you. And then number four, which is a bonus, I said three, is to look for ways to do the word. Be mindful of the word that you have spoken and look for ways to do what the word of God has told you to do, the application throughout your day. As you're meditating on it, look for, look for ways to do it and ask God to help you, to help to help you to have the word to govern you. And I would, I forgot to mention this. I would just start with one scripture. There's a lot of scriptures that you can read, but then pick one and just meditate on that one for as long as it takes. And sometimes we have life verses or we have seasonal verses where God gives you a season a verse for a season of your life that really is going to guide you. Your lamp is a word to my feet and a light to my path that encourages you and guides you through a difficult or delightful season. So I would encourage you to maybe start with that one verse that, that, um, will help you in this season or just something that you need discipline in. So I hope that this video has blessed you and I want to ask you again to subscribe, like this video, and let me know in the comments if this video helped you and um, any other ways that you can suggest to other people's or other viewers to um, help them meditate on God's word and practice godly meditation. And I want to also offer you the five clarifying questions for every season of life that I've written that you can go in and get clarity about what God is calling you to focus on. That's going to help you know uh, those five clarifying questions. When you answer those questions, it will help you to Pick a verse because you'll know what you're supposed to be focusing on. It'll also help you practice staying undistracted. So if you haven't yet, get your copy of that. Practice meditation and get your copy of the five clarifying questions because I believe it has a place for you to write your verse. Or you can even go further and get your copy of the Seasons Journal and add that to your journaling. Um, so again, I hope this video blessed you and please share it and like it with, uh, share it, <laughs> like it and give this video a thumbs up. God bless you.